So, hello, everyone. I would like to start with a simple, maybe silly question. Do I have your attention? Yes? Well, thank you. Okay, and while I have your attention, can you still feel your own bottom touching the seat? I bet a lot of you feel the mind shift from here to here. And that means you're not in contact with your body all the time. And that's a shame. And I'm going to tell you why this head-body connection is so important. As a psychosomatic therapist, I worked for many years in revalidation with people that suffer from chronic pain and chronic fatigue. And they searched for a solution and salvation everywhere and could not find it. And in our program, we help them from surviving to living, from their head to their heart, by listening to their body signals and stop fighting their feelings. Nowadays, living in this fast world, so many people suffer from survival mode, being tired, living in their heads, and ignoring body signals by taking painkillers. I think we have divided our heads from our body. And even in our healthcare system, we do so. We have hospitals, two different kinds, for physical and for mental problems. And it's really strange when you think about it, because we also have a heart in our body. And we all know most important decisions in life, big decisions, are decisions that are not only made by our head. Finding a house, finding a job, falling in love. It's our matters of our heart, right? So how do we listen to our heart and our body again? How do you deal with what you feel? This is my professional connection to the subject, but I also have a very personal one. Because to be very honest, I lived in my head as well. This was many years ago, and I went from surviving to living as well. Because I grew up with a brother who is mentally and physically disabled, I learned to hide my feelings at a very young age, because I didn't want to bother my parents, and I, could, I helped where I could. And until I became a mom, I thought I could handle everything with love and care and a constant smile. And I even thought that raising kids would be very easy. Well, lucky me, they gave me a wake-up call. It seemed that I was a real human being after all and had all kinds of feelings. And now I'm grateful for them and for all the therapists that helped me to give the same love and support to myself as I do to others. So <clears throat> let me explain how physical and emotional pain are connected. Our brain and our body, heart and gut, are wired together. And in revalidation, people always told me, no, I've got a problem in my back and it's not between my ears. But scans or x-rays did not confirm that. So I could understand their thoughts and feelings. And I used the following metaphor to explain how pain is produced by our brain. Pain is like an alarm and it goes off when it's not safe. And you can compare it with the alarm system of a house. It goes off again and again and again. And when no burglar is found, you hope anyone is smart enough to say, hey, what's wrong with the alarm system? So we can compare our central nervous system to this alarm, and it goes off when it's not safe. For example, when you've got a feeling coming up and it's not safe to show it, you're not, uh, want your vulnerability to be there, 
then you will fight this feeling and your stress and pain get worse. So, let me tell you what happens in therapy by dividing this floor into this side, our head, and to this side, our body. Our head holds thoughts, and thoughts are about the past or about the future. Did you know that? Because we think about something that happened or that's going to happen. And in our head, there's fear, there's worries, there's stress, survival mode. And our body, we hold feelings. And feeling what we feel is always in the here and now. We can feel our warmth, our relaxation, our energy. And when I realize that this body is 55 years old, I'm an adult. And one conscious breath <sighs> brings me here and now on this stage. And last but not least, in our body we can feel our emotions, our happiness, our sadness, our anger. Did you know, did you know at what age our coping mechanisms are almost fully developed? It's at the age of three, it's very young. So in an emotion, we can feel and behave like a little child. So during therapy, we help someone from here, survival mode, head to here, body, living. But now the most difficult part, when an emotional pain is triggered and it's so painful and it's so vulnerable, then there's an immediate step back to where it was safe before, here, and we will pressure this feeling, so there's no safe space anymore. Checkmate. I remember a time that I said, no, I am not going to cry, because if I start, I cannot stop anymore. Or when I show my anger, I will do something I will regret. So emotional pain can feel like an overwhelming tsunami or like an unpredictable bomb. So we need to know how to make this safe. And listen, we make it safe by staying in touch with the here and now, with your adult body. So therefore you need an anchor. And I want you so badly to remember this that I want you to feel it and not just hear me say it. Because really, this TED talk was until now a head talk. And that's silly because I talk about feelings, right? So don't worry, I will keep the experience short and safe. Please raise your bottom just a little from your chair like this. Go on. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Stay like that for one more minute. Yes, one more minute, one more minute. And then be very aware that you have a bottom and you place it on your seat. Yes. It's like you have your own dear cushions and you can rest in your seat. Take a rest, and if you want to, please close your eyes. Rest. Just feel your body breathing. And now I want you to pick an anchor. And an anchor is a place you can feel very well. For example, your feet or your bottom. 
or your breathing. And when I ask you to open your eyes again, stay in touch with your anchor. So open them just a little and gaze at your lap. Stay in touch with your anchor. And when you lose it, close your eyes again and connect again. Yes, open them. A little more, stay in contact with your anchor, a little more. Open your eyes, look around, and then turn your head to the right or the left until you meet other eyes. And when you meet them, feel your anchor, and that's the most difficult part and the most rewarding. And you are allowed to smile, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing this experience with me. You can practice and use this as much as you like. And I hope you stay in touch with your anchor while I have your attention again. I want to tell you when you need this the most. And you need this the most when you almost start crying or when you're getting angry. So, when you almost start crying, remember I compare it to how we hold a baby. When you hold a baby, you don't hold it like this. Oh, then his little butt is wiggling. No, you hold the baby like this, and you give it comfort under his little pelvis, like this. So when you are almost start crying, remember this. You can feel like a little child. So put your adult pelvis underneath you and give the same love and support as you would do to someone else who's sad. Okay, and now you're really getting angry. What you do is breathe and ask yourself how you can use your fire for your benefit. By set your boundaries and reach your goals. And know that when your sadness and your anger are allowed to be there, and you can stay in touch with your body, your fear will get less. And when you fear your sadness and your anger are allowed to be there, then there's a lot of space for happiness. And to allow yourself to be really, really happy, that's most, that's maybe even our difficult challenge. So, with this talk coming to an end, I want to give you a summary how to deal with what you feel. One, heal your head-body connection. Your anchor makes it safe. Two, when you're sad, be kind, comfort yourself. And three, use your fire for your boundaries and your passionate goals. And I hope, I really hope, that every time you take a seat, you feel your bottom. And every time you look someone in the eyes, you feel your anchor and you smile like you did tonight. Thank you.